Hi, Fiction Recapped here. Today I will explain a 2019 American superhero film based on the Marvel comics, X-Men Dark Phoenix. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film starts in 1975 when we see Jean Grey. She was in the car with her family, spending valuable time with them. At the time, a song was playing, and Jean Grey asked her mother to change it. Her mother tells her that when you get older, you can listen to whatever music she wants. However, this music will be played at this time, but she still requests her mother to change the song. When her demand is ignored, she becomes enraged and loses. Meanwhile, the sound of her car's radio starts to go up and down. Jean Grey currently requests a stop. Their car was hit by a dangerous accident. Her parents died as a result of it. Later, as the scene shifts to the hospital, everyone there debates whether or not the girl was in the car. Jean Grey should have been injured when the accident happened, but she wasn't. Meanwhile, the doctors claim that we have no idea what's going on, but she was definitely in that car. Charles Xavier arrives at the hospital and has a talk with Jean when she inquires about her parents. Charles Xavier informs her that they died in the car accident. She inquires as to what will happen to me. Charles Xavier says you'll live with me because we have a school for children like you. In the meantime, Jean Grey refuses. She says that I don't want to go with you. Charles pulls a pen from his pocket and hands it to her. Jean Grey says what I would do in this gift. He tells Jean Grey that she could sketch something beautiful or strike someone with this on their eye to bring it out. It depends on how you plan to use it. Similarly, you have some abilities that you can use for good if you so desire. You could also use it to destroy someone. It is up to you to decide how you will use these powers. She accepts to accompany Charles Xavier after listening to him. I lose his control on myself. Chair Xavier promises that if you break something, I will repair it. You can trust him. The story develops. After nine years and we see a scene set in 1992, when we see a space mission at NASA. After arriving there, many NASA scientists want to launch a satellite. However, at a moment their spaceship stopped there. Meanwhile, their president calls Charles Xavier, who is famous as the X-Men. He informs him that many people are in danger as a result of the mission that was about to complete. A solar waves are approaching them and could pose a serious threat. Charles Xavier says, Mr. President, leave it on us. We'll manage it collectively. We have not posed a threat to anyone during this mission. When everyone reaches the space, they become all aware of a wave in front of them. Going in the direction of the sun, their ship was completely destroyed. It began to roam, putting everyone's lives in danger. Meanwhile, a female member of the X-Men team tells another member to use a blast to slow down the speed of space. Because its speed was quick and it roamed quickly, a member of the X-Team men's enters their space and transports them to his own space with teleport. Our commandos are still in that spaceship, according to a girl seated in that teleport. According to the X-Men's team, those waves are getting closer to your spaceship. If we all go there again, it could pose a serious threat to us, and we will have to return right away. During this time, Charles Xavier begins to read their minds. Jean Grey could do it, says Charles Xavier to Mystique, a female member of the X-Men's team. There is nothing impossible for Jean Grey. Meanwhile, Jean Grey agrees to go there to save the commander in the ship. Now, with the help of a cult, Jean Grey reaches that space in order to save Commander. Mystique tells Jean Grey that he only has 30 seconds to complete the task and then he must act quickly. When Jean Grey arrives in space, she doesn't find the commanders, and 20 seconds pass at that moment. When an X-Men team member finds the commander, he takes them with him. Only 3 seconds remained until Jean Grey was trapped in that spaceship. The waves also got closer to the spaceship, which was revolving around it. All of the rays were absorbed by Jean Grey. They assumed Jean Grey died after what appeared to be a bomb in the distance. Jean Grey appeared normal after a while and was floating around the space. Meanwhile, the X-Men's spaceship arrives and takes Jean Grey on Earth. The entire X-Men team becomes famous as a result of this action, and they all become heroes that they were rescued a NASA scientist. After returning, Mystique scolds Charles that her life could be lost because of you. She claims that if you hadn't compelled us to go, Jean would not have gone. If even a single moment had been delayed, we would have all died. On the other hand, we see that many aliens have arrived and have taken the shape of humans. Their commander, dressed as a lady named Smith, arrives. As a Smith, he murders her entire family. On the other hand, there is a celebration in the X-Mansion, where Charles Xavier has granted everyone the freedom to live their lives as they wish for one day. They threw a party and had a great time there. On the other hand, we saw Jean Grey's unusual conduct, who was heavily drinking. Meanwhile, a flare of fire flashes across her eyes and she stands there watching it. She loses control and a flash of fire erupts from her. Everything was ruined as a result. Now Charles arrives and takes Jean Grey into a room where he tries to read her mind. He tries to figure out why this happened, but he can't really read her mind. 
She wakes up and asks Charles to go from her mind. We know that her car was hit by an accident when she was younger. Her mother was killed in the accident, but her father survived. Her father seeks help from Charles, but he, too, is puzzled by what is going inside Jean Grey. He's never understood her abilities, and he couldn't understand Jean Grey is a human or alien. Jean's Grey has been taken from her father by Charles. In order for Jean's to be unaware of this, Charles has built mental barriers in her mind. This prevents her memories from being activated by these thoughts. Her abilities have become stronger since the Phoenix powers were implanted in her mind. Jean Grey, who could control telepathic thinking powers, also had become strong. Even Charles uses all of his powers, he couldn't read her mind and he gets out from. When he wakes up the next morning, he is informed that Jean Grey is not at school. I know where she's gone, according to Charles. Later, the scene shifts when Jean Grey reaches to her father. In order to get answers to her question, which she has never found since her childhood. She claims that I was alive while you didn't try to find me, childhood. Her father claims, I still hold you accountable for that accident, because you were ragged and fainted, your mother who died as a result, and my entire life changed since the person I loved the most is no longer with me. That's why I chose Charles Xavier to be your guardian. Meanwhile, a plane carrying the X-Men team lands and asks her to come with. They claim that whatever has gone wrong, we will fix. Then, the police come on the scene after hearing the police siren, Jean loses control and becomes uncontrollable, resulting in a blast. We now know about her true abilities. She possesses incredible abilities. The X-Men team tries to control her, but she fights back with her telepathic abilities. Meanwhile, one of the X-Men's team members tries to shoot her. Charles stops him and informs him that Mystique is on her way to explain things to her. She tells her that you have been unique since childhood. You've got a lot of abilities. We know what happened to you, and we'll assist you. We'll fix everything. She invites her to return to school. Jean loses control after, and she blasts, causing Mystique to fall to a distance. She is dead when a wooden corner strikes her in the head. Jean didn't want to murder her, but she couldn't keep her under control. Later on, we see Mystique's funeral. Charles's assistant now believes Charles is too responsible for her death, but he claims that I had asked her to go further for the benefit of everyone. The scene now moves to Jean's, where she goes where her friend Eric lived. She inquires as to how you were able to control yourself after killing so many people. You, too, wish for people like us to exist on this planet. Finally, how did you change yourself? He informs her that he has lost everyone he loved for. Their conversation continues, but the US military comes. They inquire if Eric is aware that Jean Grey is present. Eric wonders why you're looking for Jean Grey. They said she was responsible for the killing of many police officers. If you don't hand over Jean Grey to us, we'll kill everyone here. Jean Grey comes out of the room and begins destroying their helicopter. Eric tries to stop Jean's but he realizes that Jean's abilities are greater than his. Eric saves everyone and sends the soldiers back using his abilities. They might be able to avoid the impending danger. He asks her to go, as, you could be dangerous for my people, and I don't want to lose my people. Jean's then leaves after hearing to this. The scene now shifts to aliens in the form of a lady named Smith. She finds Jean's gray and tells him that his abilities are unmatched. I'm totally aware of your ability. Nobody is aware of your abilities. After being trapped by her, Jean joins her. Smith now tells her that she possesses sufficient power to create a new planet. You were created for something unique. You must think differently. You can create your own planet with my help. The scene now turns to Eric, who is approached by a member of the X-Men team. Jeans has been uncontrollable, he claims, and she's killed our member Mystique. Mystique, who was previously Eric's best friend. Eric rags when he learns of this. They have now decided to kill Jeans Grey. He now takes out his helmet and becomes Magneto. On the other hand, Charles learns about Jean Grey's location. They attempt to take her back into the school. Eric and his companions arrive at her location to kill her. Charles, on the other hand, reaches out to take her back. Where they encounter an alien, Eric tries to kill Jean Grey. Meanwhile, Jean Grey uses her abilities and controlled him. With her powers of hands, she breaks his helmet and Eric falls down. Charles arrives at the same time. After getting into her mind, he tries to stop her. He later discovers that she is so powerful and my powers are nothing in front of her powers. If I couldn't go into her mind, Charles tells Jean's Grey, you could go into mine. As a result, you'd be able to determine who was wrong and who was correct, what your father has done with you and what I have done. When she reads his mind, she becomes aware that Charles has supported her in childhood. He also helped her in controlling her abilities. It was at this point that Charles exclaimed, this is a gift from God. Whether you want to use it to help people or to destroy them, when she understands, she tells Smith, I don't need these powers you can take. Jean is completely unaware that she is an alien. Smith is now trying to take her powers, but Charles reads Smith's mind. Knowing she is an alien, he prevents Jean Grey from sharing her abilities. With these abilities, 
She could damage the world and she could destroy the entire world. Jean becomes uncontrollable at this point. She starts to give her powers to Smith. However, a member of the X-Men team appears. He separates them with the help of his laser sword. The police arrive at the same time and arrest the members of the X-Men team. They place a collar around their necks to prevent them from using their powers. On the other hand, we notice aliens on the train. They've arrived in search of Jean Grey. They begin killing police officers as soon as they arrive. Now, a group of X-Men claims that if you release us, we will help you and destroy them. In the meantime, a cop unlocks them. Now X-Men team encounter them. Charles, on the other hand, enters Jean's mind and informs her that aliens want to control her powers. If they take control of your powers, they will destroy the whole world. Charles hears Jean Grey say, I'm ready to help my team. Jean Grey arrives there and Smith, who has taken the powers of Jean Grey arrives there too. She begins to push the X-Men team out of her path as soon as she arrives. Jean Grey awakens after saving her team she leads them to a location. As a result, they wouldn't have any danger. Later on, we witness Jean Grey and Smith fight. Smith comes to take Jean Grey's powers. She agrees to give all of her powers. Meanwhile, Smith is aware that these abilities are powerful. Because these powers were strange, when she touched these powers, she tried to set her hand aside. But Jean's doesn't let her do so. We later see, because of these powers a circle around them had made that was powerful. That alien tells Jean Grey that if I die, everyone else will die with me. Jean Grey decides to make self-sacrifice and travels across space with Smith. She uses all of her powers to kill Smith. A great explosion occurs in space, followed by the light of a dark phoenix. The fight comes to an end as a result of this. Later on, we see Charles's school that was named Jean Grey's Gifted School. Charles had already retired from the school, and the new principal was Hank, his assistant. We see Charles and Eric later in the film, who were formerly close friends but had to be separated due to mental differences. Their paths have also diverged. They're currently engaged in their final chess encounter. Later, we see a ray of light from the sky, suggesting that Jean Grey is still alive, along with the movie ends. If you really enjoy this video, please subscribe our channel for watching more interesting videos. Goodbye.